Okay, so my most recent video I posted was about um, camshaft and crankshaft position signals and looking at the correlation between them. And I mentioned in that video some stuff about variable valve timing. Today I have this 2014 Ford Explorer that has variable valve timing. So I thought I'd make another quick video showing you how to compare cam crank and seeing if the variable valve timing is activating and how much it affects the timing. So we're looking at the top of the engine here and it's right over here on the front of the head. We have oil control valves or variable valve timing solenoids controlling um, both intake and exhaust. So I've teed into one of those just so that we can see the moment when it starts activating. And then up here at the PCM, kind of a mess it looks like up here, but I'm teed into the two camshaft position sensors for this head here and the crankshaft position sensor. And we've set up our scope so that we can look at um, all four of those channels at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it and then I'll show you what it looks like real quick. All right, so you can see on channel A in blue, that's our crankshaft position sensor. And then channel B and C, the red and green ones, those are our two camshafts. And then that uh, channel D, that goldish colored one at the top, that will be our variable valve timing solenoid, which right now shouldn't be doing much. Um, so to make it work, we need to, we need to put this vehicle in gear and rev it above 2000 RPM to get that VVT to activate. So I'm gonna increase the time on the scope so that I can capture the difference between idle and that moment when I rev it up. And then we'll come back here and I'll show you what it looks like and we'll analyze it together. Okay, so this is what we captured here. So this was just idling and then I revved it up above 2000 right there and you can see that the variable valve timing solenoid activated. We'll see it better when we zoom in here in a minute. And then I did it again over here. And so let's go analyze this and we can find out if everything's in time and how much the cams are advancing or in the case of the exhaust, probably retarding. Um, so yeah, let me get back to my desk. All right, so let's start analyzing this thing. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this section over here where we're idling. And let's get enough data that we can see the camshafts repeat their signals. And then let's separate them a little bit so you can see the difference. So on the red signal, you get a three bump and then a one, and then it starts over three bump and then a one. On the green signal, it's the same thing, but they're not lined up with each other, right? One is for the exhaust, one is for the intake. And on the diagrams, it never told me which one was which. It called one of them camshaft 22 versus camshaft 21. But when we start looking at the point over here where they start advancing, we'll be able to tell which one is which, okay? So uh, let's pull over our phase rulers and I'm gonna line them up. I'm gonna, let's do the green first. Let's line one up at the top of the one peak on the green and then the other one when it repeats right over here. Then I'm gonna turn on my rulers or pull over my rulers, I should say. And I'm gonna put one lined up with the phase ruler right here. And then the other one I'm gonna line up with the crankshaft signal on this tooth right there. And then we get this delta reading up here. I showed you this in my other video of 62.66 degrees. So the difference between these two right there. And if I had a known good waveform to compare it to, I'd be able to tell whether or not that's in time at idle or not. We could do the same thing on the red and now pull it over to the, the camshaft in red and now I see 120.4 degrees difference between red and the crankshaft. Okay, so we'll take note of those, those readings. In fact, I'm probably gonna write those down and then we'll go look at when, we're, when we were revving it up under a load and we'll see how far each of them moves. All right, now let's zoom into a section of this when the VVT solenoid activates and I wanna do it right here at the beginning so you can see what that looks like. So the VVT solenoid is being controlled by duty cycle from the PCM. And so at this moment right here, you can see it start to activate and it's just turning the signal on and off rapidly. Uh, I have other videos about duty cycle if you wanna watch those. And we're not gonna focus a whole lot on the solenoid on this one. I just put this on here so we could see the moment in time when the PCM started to command it. 
So I'm just going to come over here just a little bit afterwards, right in this zone, and let's figure out if it's even started moving yet. And so we need those phase rulers back out. Let's pull those over. And we'll do the same thing we did. I'm going to pull it to the top of the green right there. And we'll do another one to that one. Pull over these rulers again. Now, when we did it at idle, the green was 62.66 degrees. And now you can see that it's already started to move just a little bit, 59.68 degrees. Okay, I'm going to write that down real fast. And it could be also a little inaccurate, right? You got to remember that we started revving it, so things are starting to move a little bit faster. So the amount of zoom that we had on the screen before might be different than this. And so if you want to make sure you're really at the tops of those peaks, we could zoom in a little bit more and get more, more accurate, and we might find that we have to do that. But let's pull this over to the red. The red at idle was 120.4, and right now we're at like 113. Okay, so that's, something's definitely moving around. Let's uh, move over a little bit on the screen to the point where we're, where it's already been going for a little bit. And notice again, engine's revving a little bit faster. All the signals are getting closer together. I'm going to zoom in a little tighter so we can make sure that we get more accurate on our rulers. Let's measure this one more time. First ruler here. Right there. Okay, and on the green we are now reading 75.16, and the red only 85.5. So I think when we were back in the last section and we were reading the green, I told you it's about 59.68. I think we needed to zoom in a little bit more. I bet it hadn't started moving really. Because notice the green is getting bigger. We originally started at 62.66, and now we're reading, let me go back, I forgot to write that one down. Now we're reading about 78.13, and then the red, we originally started at 120.4, and now we're reading 84.07. Okay, so what we're seeing is, the, when we rev it up and it starts activating the VVT, the red signal moves that way in relationship to the crankshaft, and the green signal moves this way, and the red and green start to align more and more. Okay, so what does this prove? It proves that the VVT is working, right? The computer is commanding in that. We can see it here. We can see the camshafts moving in relationship to the crank. And then, you know, when we go back to idle over here in this section, if we wanted to, we could make sure that it goes back to where it was before we started. And that would prove that, you know, oil flow is being, is, um, is happening all right. Uh, solenoids are working, cams are moving. Obviously the cam and crank signals are looking good. So there's a lot you can see with this. I'll give you an example of one time when I really needed this. I was working on a Nissan Versa a few years ago and it came in with codes for the variable valve timing. And when you drove this car, every time, like it seemed like it had great acceleration, but every time you came to a stop, the car would bog down and it would die. And then you'd let it sit for a little bit and then it would start back up and it drove fine until the next time you came down for, uh, to a stop. So we started analyzing it just like this and we could easily see the solenoids move just like we wanted, or the camshafts move just like we wanted to. We could easily see the solenoids being activated. But then every time when it wanted to die, we went over into that zone to find out if the camshafts went back to their original position, and they weren't. And so we started taking apart those, those uh, solenoids or the cam phasers on there, and it was all sorts of gummed up with, with stuff. And so it needed an oil change. But really, it needed an oil change a long time ago because there was a little bit of metal and stuff in there. And come to find out later on, it had um, some damage, some bearings. And that's why where all the gunk was coming up. So it had bigger problems. But the point being, you could see that the VVT solenoids wouldn't release back to their original position by doing this test. So a lot of value comes in this. And I think you're going to see a lot of these codes out there for VVT solenoids. I already have. 
So anyways, hopefully that helps some of you out there. And that's it for today.